So in this PowerPoint, we're looking at a level nine GCSE exemplar piece of work from last year. Um, this will give you a sense of what you need to do. Uh, presently, we are focusing on assessment objective two, which is about developing ideas. So I especially want you to be looking at how this student develops her ideas and see how you can do that with your project. So in this slide, we have a, a kind of an overview of what the project's about. Uh, you've got the title, the past, the present and the future, and annotation which explains what the student's intention is in this project, what they're trying to achieve and what they're going to be looking at. So clearly from this annotation and image, you'll see that the this student is looking at historical images, um, looking at uh, paintings of um, famous kings, princes from the past, and then looking at the present and looking at futuristic images and bringing all those together into a new fresh idea. And we'll now see how this student develops these ideas further. So in this slide, we start with assessment objective one and the student is first of all looking at artists now you've done this already with your project so you should have a good idea of how this works um, Holbein is one of the artists that she's looking at an artist who painted around the time of King Henry VIII and she's also looking at her own portraiture that she's taken as well So here we're looking at two different artists. Um, one artist who does kind of graphic style illustrations of uh, robots in the future. And another artist that we see on the right who does surreal, but still graphic style imag imagery of faces. These are obviously things that the student is interested in. And they're quite different as well, which is quite useful. So that both artists have different styles, which means that later on those ideas can be brought together successfully to create something new. And on this page, we see how the student has presented her ideas around Holbein, the artist that we've already mentioned. Um, annotation is not long, but it's to the point, it's informative, and it's useful. And we have a really good quality drawing and excellent quality presentation to go along with that annotation. So still looking at assessment objective one. Um, not looking at artists as such in this particular page, but he's or she is drawing from uh, resources from around her so looking at every day the modern the now and when and she's looking at logos so she does a, a page where she explores different typefaces different logos clearly annotated and beautifully presented but the job that the page is trying to do is to show a range of different potential branding ideas that she might or might not use in her ideas later on So again, assess on objective one continues. And now we're looking at, again, pulling different visual ideas uh, from different places. So she's finding interesting images of clocks, uh, not just the, the first clock she found on the internet, but searching for a particular image, different, different colors um, of that image. She's looking at images of globes. She's looking at images of mannequins and she's explaining why, and you will have time to read uh, why she's chosen these images. She's written that on there as well. Um, on the right hand side of the page, we start to see things developing a bit further. Now, we're, we're now starting to look at 
uh, assessment objective two, developing of ideas. Now this is where you guys are at at the moment. So pay special attention to the next few slides and see how, how you can use these ideas with your work. So here we see um, a bit of portraiture. Uh, she has used observation as well, but she has taken ideas of branding, which she was exploring on uh, a few pages before in her book. She's taken the mannequins, which you can see from the uh, photographs on the, on the left, the globe, possibly the clock. Can't quite see the clock in that one, but she's bringing together all these different images uh, to, to try out ideas. And of course, as you can see, she's doing it in a highly skilled way. So still looking at assessment objective two. In this image, She's really looking into the idea of faces and really looking back at the idea of the, the Holbein images that she was exploring before. But now she's trying to explore how she can do portraiture in different ways, using different techniques, different shading styles. And you'll see as the, her work progresses that she does explore a whole range of different possibilities, uh, color pencil, collage, photography, uh, all brought it all brought together in different ways, and of course, the reason why she did so well is is the high level of skill that she brings to all her drawings. You you will note the little details of refinement on that you get in these images. Um, that's something that if you can do, you want to really make sure you put into your work. So here we go with AO2 again, but on this one, you've also got a little bit of assessment objective three, because we're seeing observational drawing. Um, this student, as you'll see throughout the book, is looking, doing drawing, not always from first hand. Sometimes the drawings in this case are from internet sites um, or are from magazines, um, but she's really exploring drawing and shading at, at a high level. That's the most, that's the most important thing. And then that feeds into um, AO2, which is, again, what you're meant to be doing at the moment, which is about developing of ideas. Now, um, her, her work is around the future, and this is her bringing the past and the future together. So she, we've got the kind of machinery, a robotic kind of technology that, that we've seen before from artists that she's been exploring. But we've also got the Holbein style of work that we're seeing, the, the portraits of kings and queens, in this case, King Henry VIII. So she's bringing together the futuristic imagery of machinery and robotics with the painting style of Holbein. So doing that and by bringing those different things together and trying out ideas is touching on AO2 development of, of ideas. So you can see how her, her work is developing, how her ideas are changing. And in this image, she continues to develop her ideas, AO2. She's still maintaining that pencil style that she's very good at, but the backgrounds are developing now. She's starting to use the logos. She's testing out how she can overlap different logos, some modern day logos. She's also got the um, robotic style kind of going on in there as well. So, in this image, you've got three or four different things all going around, all going on at the same time. And she's still maintaining that high level of draftsmanship. So in this page, she's really pointing out to the viewer, the person marking the work, what exactly her ideas are, what she intends to do. She's already developed a lot of, of things in a book and she's uh, tried out lots of ideas but, but now she has a really clear intention about where she wants to go with the project and what the outcomes will be. So with that in mind she goes back to drawing um, assessment objective three yeah so she's recording the world around her and we'll see later how she incorporates these things into her work.
So we can start to see now her ideas starting to come to some kind of a conclusion. She's still looking at detail and developing ideas. If you look at the image on the right, you can see how she's just in this one focused on the eye and how she can use the mechanics of robotics and mix that in with skin textures and tones. She's, uh, but there's still development ideas. But on the left, you can see how she's used that and put that in place into a, we, we could call this a final piece, but in, in her, with her, you'll see that it's one of many outcomes that she's producing throughout her project. There isn't just one final piece at the end, um, there's lots of outcomes. Um, and at the same time, she's still developing her work while producing final pieces. So what I've done over the next few slides is to break down what we've seen into the four assessment objectives. So what I'd like you to do is to go through each of these slides and see what it was about this, this student that got her almost top marks. So, so she's a level nine student. Um, on each page, you will see the score she gets. So in this case, she's got 23 out of a possible 24. and then the the notes on this slide are from the examiner not from me I, I did not write these the examiner wrote these from aqa and this is explaining why she got that 23 and then on the next slide you've got ao2 and then it explains why she got the mark she got for assessment objective two and so on so read through those see if you can get a really good understanding of of why this student got the mark she did it's not just because she's good at drawing. It's more to do with the fact that she's trying out different ideas in, in a variety of different ways. And that's what we want you to be doing now. And it's also about the level of quality that we see on each page. It's also about the fact that she's sourcing good quality images and she's annotating and explaining her, her ideas throughout. Please take note that she's not writing pages and pages of annotation, but when she does write, her, her thoughts are clear. And, that, and that's what annotation is meant to be. Okay, so have a look through, have a look through the different slides and see what you make of it all.